Okay, in this presentation we're going to look at statistical modelling with R for actuarial students. This follows the CS2B curriculum that actuarial students may be familiar with. The emphasis is placed on being able to apply statistical methods to actuarial problems using real data sets and the open source software environment R. The curriculum comprises time series analysis, probability distributions, which we're going to look at here, and other things such as survival analysis and so on. Now, just as a caveat, I am an R programmer mostly, so there are actuarial sort of terminology involved in this um, presentation. I'm not that familiar with it, so I'm just going to give it my best guess and move on. So, two exercises to start with. So this is broken up into multiple components. The claim size X for a class of insurance follows a gamma distribution with parameters 10, which is the alpha parameter, the shape parameter, and 0 0.2 beta, the rate parameter. So the exercises, the first two exercises are calculate the probability density function at x equals 30, and then also calculate the median of the function, the median of the distribution, actually, that should say, but I'll just go with what's in the exam paper. So just as a quick remark, we're dealing with the gamma distribution and the parameters are the alpha, or is the shape parameter alpha and the rate parameter beta. Now I'm going to code it as A and B. Now, also what we have here are the formulas for the probability density function, f of x, and the cumulative distribution function, capital F of x, okay? Now we're not really going to use those formulas there, but I just sort of have them there just to sort of show you what we're dealing with. So the mean and the variance of the gamma distribution are straightforward enough. The mean is alpha divided by beta, and the variance is alpha divided by beta squared. We're going to code that up as a divided by b and a divided by b squared. Okay, so anyway, let's just begin with the first question. Find the probability density function when x is equal to 30. So we're just going to state alpha and beta as a and b just for the sake of simplicity and assign the values, values 10 and 0 0.2. We're also going to get x equal to 30. Just assign that to 30 to x. And there we do it calculated there. So that's everything we have to work with. X is equal to 30. Shape parameter is A is 10 and the rate parameter is B which is 0 0.2. The command is D. That's the probability density function. D for density essentially. And that is the name of the distribution gamma. So D gamma. So we get 0 0.0137677. Okay. Now just to highlight something. This is relevant because there are multiple ways of specifying the gamma distribution. There's also using the scale parameter. So uh, the default settings are sh uh, rate and shape respectively. So if I just type in A and B without stating rate equals and shape equals, I still get the same answer or actually shape equals and rate equals 0 0.0137677. But if I I'm dealing with the rate parameter as, and the shape parameter, I should say. It can specify shape and scale. So shape equals A and scale equals 1 over B. So just actually, all you have to do is just specify scale equals and shape equals. So I meant to specify shape there. Okay. And that gives us the same answer, 0 0.0137677. So just watch out for that. There's multiple ways of stating formulation the gamma distribution and R will pick one in particular but you can use the other one. So exercise two what we have to do is find the median. We want to find M such that the probability of X less than or equal to M equals 0 0.5. That's the definition of the median. Okay so here what we do is Q gamma Q for quantile the 50th percentile or the 0 0.5 quantile is the median okay so q gamma 0 0.5 a and b and it turns out to be 48.34357 so that's another straightforward enough one really things are going to get more interested interesting now and this is where the actuarial knowledge comes in a quota share insurance is in place with 75 percent retained proportion okay so that's actuarial terminology that i'm not familiar with at all but we'll just go along with what I un my understanding of it. Estimate the mean and the variance of the amount paid by the reinsurer in respect of a single claim. So essentially if the retained proportion 
is 75%, that means that the reinsurer pays 25% of a claim. Okay, so the underlying distribution will have the gamma distribution, the reinsurer will pay 25% of the claims based on that gamma distribution. So the underlying value is X, and what the reinsurer will pay is Y, okay, which is 25% of X. Okay, so how do we call that up? R is 0 0.75, that's retained proportion. So the underlying distribution of the claims is X, which and the mean is A divided by B, which is 50, and the variance is A divided by B squared, which is 250. Okay, that's not what we're asked. We're asked for what the proportion that the reinsurer will pay. So the what we get is the expected value of Y, which is 25% of X. Okay, so it's 12.5. And the variance of that is... So the variance is, we're going to use this formula here, okay? The variance of AX is equal to A squared variance of X, okay? So how does that relate to what we're doing? So essentially it is 1 minus R is this scalar factor here. And when we take it out of the variance, what we do is we square that, okay? So here A is 1 minus R. And that means a squared is 1 minus r squared, okay? So the variance of y is 1 minus r squared times the variance of x, and that turns out to be 15.625, okay? So for the rest of the questions, what we're going to do is use the seed 250 for the following questions. So what we're dealing with now is the compound distribution, which is the uh, compound distribution based on the Poisson distribution and the gamma distribution, okay? The Poisson distribution will have a rate parameter of 500 and the gamma distribution will have parameters 600 and 0 0.3. The rate and the shape parameter 600 and the rate parameter 0 0.3. So what we're going to do is generate 1000 observations and calculate the 500th simulated value. So we just have to uh, calculate 1000 and just pick out the 500 in that sequence. So set the seed 250 okay first off what we do is we specify the number of claims which is a Poisson random variable over a sequence of 1000 iterations okay that's n and what we're going to do is sum them up okay so we're going to collect up all our information about the summations of the claim amounts in this vector called S. So I just set it up there and that's essentially storage that we have ready for this iteration, this for loop that we're going to do. So we're going to use a for loop for I in 1 to 1000. This is the key line here. X is R gamma N of I shape equals 600 rate equals 0 0.3. So sh shape and rate is just the parameters of the gamma distribution. We won't really worry about them. R gamma, that is random numbers generated according to the gamma distribution. And how many is dependent on which iteration of the 1000 iterations we're doing. So there's 1000 iterations. There's 1000 different claim, numbers of claims, claim counts, okay. They should be in and around 500, but they could be 5, 450 in one iteration and 550 in the next. R gamma uh, is, creates the claims values for corresponding to how many we need for each iteration. And then what we're going to do here is sum them up. Okay. In the next line, S of I is a sum of the claims the total number of claims in each iteration, okay? The number of claims change from iteration to iteration, and the number of claim amounts change from iteration to iteration. And overall, obviously the claim amounts change, the total claim uh, vulnerability exposure changes. So S of I is sum of X, okay? So it's the sum of that. So essentially what we have in X, S is 1000 saved up values, saved up the total claim amount from each iteration where there's different numbers of claims and different totals, but they still sum up to one value. Okay. 
So in the 500 iteration, the summation is 1,021,670. Okay. So here we are at exercise five. The insurer wants to limit its claim liability and hence has modified the terms of the policy. It will now only pay for any amount in excess of an amount of 500 on each claims. If, it, if the amount is less than 500, you don't get anything. And if the amount is more than 500, it's only the value greater than 500. So if the claim amount is 600, you're only going to get 100. Calculate the 500 simulated value for the insurer under the revised conditions. So this is very similar to what we've done before. The key thing here now is that we are adding in this line here. Okay. P max parallel maximum zero or X minus M. Okay. So if the value X, so essentially what we're going to do is subtract each from each of the claim totals 500. Here we have set 500 to be the amount we deduct. Okay. So what happens here is, is if this value is less than zero, we just replace it with zero. So essentially it just picks out these numbers here, zero, it basically compares it to zero. Each value of X minus M, it just compares it to zero. And if it's greater than zero, it just, we, you get X minus M, but if it's less than zero, you just get zero. Okay. So it's just a way of not knocking out negative numbers essentially. Okay, that's it really. So that's the only additional thing we do. And the 500 claim uh, value there, the total claim amount is 765, 765,670.5. Okay, and exercise six, the insurer wants to analyze another claim sharing option under this scheme. The insurer will pay 75% of the claim amount and the rest will be borne by the shareholder, the policyholder. Calculate the 500 simulated value for the insurer under this option, okay? So this is very similar to what we've done before. Now M here is just the amount that the will be, have to be paid by the person making the claim, okay? So essentially what happens here is the reinsurer will pay 75%, it just, what we have in reverse, okay? So here we calculate our total underlying claim amount based on the Poisson distribution and the gamma distribution, Poisson for the number of claims, gamma for the uh, total number of value of the claims. Here we just calculate what in this case is 75% of that Okay, one minus M, and here we just get the totals. Okay, so here we have the claim amounts, and we just essentially just multiply it by 0 0.75, get three quarters of it, and this is where we sum them all up and save it in S. Okay, so the 500th total claim amount is 766, 766,252.80. Okay, so that's it. We'll leave it there.